The world's becoming ever more vulnerable to disasters for many reasons. And the Dropper Robotics Challenge is a way of trying to make society more resilient to disasters by developing tools that can go in places where people cannot when a disaster strikes. 9-11 happened. There were a lot of friends and family that directly impacted by that. And I had to ask the question, what role can robotics have in disaster response? And so that has been kind of our focus. We use some of the technologies developed to help in post-Hurricane uh, Katrina efforts. And now this DRC is just yet another realization of being able to use what we have in the lab and to test it out in the real world to make a positive impact and a meaningful difference. In Fukushima, we saw that human beings tried their best to go in to mitigate the disaster so it would not be as bad. The problem was is that the radiation levels were too high, so they had to turn around before they could open valves to vent the reactor. We think that with robots acting at a distance, robots that can go wherever they need to go, regardless of how bad the contamination is, uh, will be able to solve problems like Fukushima. What we're really trying to see is what the state of the art is right now in human beings and robots working together to address a disaster scenario. So what can people do working at a distance over a very poor communication link to command these robots? Despite the fact that the communication link is bad, can the robots understand what they need to do? We had many different ways of attracting the teams. We had the usual DARPA method where we asked for proposals and the teams wrote proposals. We also had some wildcard methods as well. We had a virtual robotics challenge, which in simulation allowed any team that wanted to to compete against the ones that we had chosen through proposals. And in fact, one of them did and ended up in second place compared to many of the other teams. And so they were able to get in the challenge as well. And then finally, we have a total freestyle one where without any funding from us, uh, teams can come in and challenge the teams who have been funded uh, and compete for the final prize. The final prize for the Dropper Robotics Challenge is $2 million. We have three milestones in the program. In the Virtual Robotics Challenge, we had a whole bunch of competitors try in simulation to beat the teams that we had already funded, and we had one of them that did that. The other part of that milestone is that we did a critical design review on all the teams that we had funded and made sure that their robots were really up to snuff, that the design was up to snuff. Uh, the next event is the Dropper Robotics Challenge Trials. And that's really a way of us measuring after six to nine months of effort by the performers, what's the state of the art right now? And then we have a whole year that's going to transpire between the trials and the finals, and we're going to see what happens if some really focused effort goes in and how far we can get within that year.